trauma patient assessment. For the purpose of this demo, our patient has a gunshot wound to their chest. I arrive at the scene, I'm going to go through my scene size up. My scene is safe, PD is already at the scene. BSI, mechanism of injury is a gunshot wound. Number of patients is one. I'm going to direct my partner to provide inline stabilization of the patient's head and neck as I continue on to the primary assessment. Primary assessment. I'm going to formulate a general impression of my patient. I find a 20-something year old male patient, supine, blood soaking through his shirt, and he appears to be unstable. I'm going to determine his level of consciousness. Hey, could you hear me? Could you hear me? Checking for a response to pain. There is no response. I'm feeling for a pulse. One, two, three, four, five. I feel a pulse. He is breathing. I'm going to call for a paramedic backup. His chief complaint is that he's unresponsive. I'm going to direct my partner to open the airway with the jaw thrust. And we're going to manage his airway open, clear, and maintain. I'm going to look inside the mouth. I don't see any fluid, so I'm not going to suction. I'm going to measure and insert an OPA. He tolerates that. Breathing. Expose his chest by removing his outer clothing. I see a gunshot wound toward the left side of his chest. I'm going to palpate. Cross the clavicles, down the sternum, out to the side, and hold my hand here. And I observe that there is equal expansion of the chest. The ribs are intact. I'm going to take my stethoscope, and I'm going to auscultate. Mid-axillary. And mid-axillary on the other side. I hear that there are rails present. We're ventilating him with a BVM hooked up to supplemental oxygen. And we're going to apply an occlusive dressing to the person's chest where the hole is, sealing up three sides and leaving the fourth side to act as a flutter valve. Circulation. I'm checking for bleeding. I observe that the bleeding in the chest has already stopped. And now I'm looking for any other major or life-threatening bleeding anterior. And I'm also going to check posterior, behind the voids, behind the neck. Check my gloves, no blood. Behind the back, again observing no blood. Behind the knees, no blood. And behind the ankles, no blood. Going to check radial pulses. I feel that they're rapid and weak. Checking the skin, color, temperature, and condition. I'm observing that he's pale, cool, and moist. And I suspect that my patient is in shock, and I will treat him for shock. I'm going to prioritize my patient. It's a high priority patient. He appears to be unstable, and we're going to prepare for a rapid transport to the hospital. We've collared and backboarded our patient. We transferred them to the stretcher, at which time we removed the backboard while leaving the collar in place. We're now going to check the person's vital signs, going to feel for a pulse, measuring it for 30 seconds. For the purposes of this demo, the patient's pulse is 110 and weak. Going to measure respirations, rate, rhythm, and quality. Measuring it for 30 seconds, multiplying it by two if regular. In the event that it's irregular, I'm measuring it for the entire minute. For the purposes of this demo, he's being ventilated at a rate of 12 breaths per minute, and his underlying rate is eight breaths per minute. Going to measure the person's blood pressure by auscultation. Pumping it up. Up. 
watching the gauge. For the purposes of this demo, his blood pressure is 90 over 60. The skin is pale, cool, and clammy. Pupils are equal and reactive to light. We're going to auscultate his breath sounds. We're going to attempt to auscultate upper and lower, anterior and posterior. Since this patient is supine, we're going to have to assess the bases. And for the purposes of this demo, the patient still has rails. History of the present illness. The patient is unable to communicate. I'm going to try to find out from PD the distance and the caliber of the bullet. Sample history, I'm observing for any medical alert bracelets. I don't see any. We could also find out from PD if there's any evidence of drug use or alcohol. Going to go on to do the secondary assessment. Palpating around the scalp and the skull. The facial bones looking around the orbit of the eyes for raccoon's eyes. In the nose for any fluid draining out. In the mouth for any fluid accumulating inside of the ears as well, and behind the ear for any evidence of battle signs. Examining through the opening in the collar for JVD or tracheal deviation, none are noted. Palpating the clavicles and down the sternum, feeling for the integrity of the ribs, the ribs are intact. Auscultating. Upper and lower. Anterior and posterior. Rails are noted. Assessing the abdomen, four quadrants, looking at the patient's face for any reaction to pain, trying to determine if there's rigidity or distension, soft and non-tender. In and down on the person's hips, no unusual movement noted. Observing at the genitalia for any discharge or in a male patient for any priapism. Coming down, doing the legs together for symmetry, each one more in depth. Checking distal pulses, movement and sensation, or reflexes in the feet. Come back up and do the arms together for symmetry, each one more in depth, pulses, and movement and sensation. We are now going to perform the reassessment of our patient. Based on the patient's condition, we're going to reassess him at least every five minutes. And we're going to repeat the primary assessment, which is the mental state in the ABCs. We're going to repeat the vital signs. We're going to look, for, look at his injuries. And we're going to check our interventions to make sure that the treatment is still appropriate.